Hi, I am Sean and I'm the creator of the Cold Feet Podcast. I am passionate about helping human beings unlock their inner athlete through strength, mobility, and a holistic lifestyle. I created the Cold Feet Podcast to help educate you on athletic performance, tactical development, holistic health, and so much more. So grab a hot cocoa and enjoy the episode. What's up, what's going on, man? Ron, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience? Hi, everyone. First of all, it's really, really uh, a pleasure to be here. It's really happy to meet you. It's a pleasure, bro. Uh, I would hug you, but we're too cold to hug yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really cool to meet another, like, uh, hardcore. You said cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's, that was funny. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, like another, really, someone who's deep into the body techniques. Not uh, not conventional body techniques, at least in Israel right now. So I'm a, my name is Ron Cohen, I'm 29. Yeah. I live in Jerusalem, I was born and raised in Jerusalem to speak to you. But speak to, just, just speak naturally. Okay. Yeah. Born and raised in Jerusalem. Um, now I live in Moshav in Adab. Amazing. Yeah. Right near Shvila Mayanot. That's why yeah. I, uh, I moved over there. So we just right. Like I'm open 100 meters, I go with my dog, I have my uh, Thailand one barefoot, and uh, Nozi, who uh, didn't yet uh, bre- uh, uh, brought me ready to this, this uh, level of cold. Job. So the one podcast that me and my guests got hyperthermia was by Aminadav and Shvila Mainot, the square. Uh, we were in there in December for 45 minutes, and then after the podcast, we finished the hike. And like the way back... I think hyperthermia leads to some sort of a psychedelic trance state because on the way back, I felt I was floating on clouds. Like something happened to my body physiologically and that's why I'm more wary about hyperthermia, like the disclaimer that you signed and uh, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so let's finish introducing yourself, sorry. Um, so what I do right now, I do education. So I just finished my... Uh, academic uh, training in a program called uh, the mm-hmm. uh, which trains uh, teachers Amazing. yeah uh, first and second degree bachelor master in uh, Jewish uh, sciences Amazing. so uh, biblical sciences uh, yeah. Israel, like uh, Jewish uh, philosophy Amazing. and right now I'm a teacher Speak up a bit, just yeah. so we can hear you. We're not using mics today, so. Uh, so I teach formal teaching. Atichon Amaniot. Art school. Arts, arts uh, high school in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. I do non-formal education uh, with the group and uh, group therapy. Not good uh, translation because not every group. Uh, Meeting is uh, therapy, mm-hmm. but also the groups. Group bonding, like the, bonding. the skills and the ladders and the ropes, like all sorts of group bonding activities. Not outdoors, indoors. Mm. Got it, okay. And uh, I run barefoot. <laughs> I think the reason why I had you on the show today was obviously to meet you, but uh, we recently had the Jerusalem Marathon here in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and I posted my victory to the barefoot community here in Israel, and you posted your victory, and I'm like, well, I ran the 10K barefoot, and this dude ran the 42 Point two K barefoot. Yeah. So uh, this is something I want to meet. So let's just dive right into your barefoot adventure. Can you tell us how you started barefoot running? What got you into it? And I believe you're also a running coach, correct? Yeah. So how it went from being a barefoot runner to a running coach and all your adventures, please do. go ahead. So, One thing, yeah. apologies to help with your shivering, focus on your breath. So into your nose and out to your mouth. Try to relax your body. You see how like I'm cold, I'm the same cold as you, but I'm just kind of like, oh, it's cold. Okay, take it away. So I started still uh, uh, dead, confronting with the cold. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a true confrontation, especially as the Jerusalem cold is about to hit us. We'll be the most prepared. I can guarantee it. So I started barefoot running twelve years ago. Wow. Quite a journey. Yeah. 
Yeah, when I was uh, 18, 19 years old, when I was preparing for the IDF. Mm. You were a pre-army barefooter. Yeah. Those are not common. Yeah. I've met many people in the army who are barefoot runners with sandals, and I, I didn't. I wasn't educated about the area yet, so I was like, "Why are you running in sandals? That's probably yeah. terrible for you." And look at me now. I don't even have shoes. I, yeah. I have many shoes, but I don't wear them. Yeah, back then, like nobody knew barefoot running in Israel. Uh, got a lot of uh, comments. So the reason why, I, uh, so I had this like gap year in Israel. We do some of us do gap year between high school and the army. I went to yeshiva, like uh, yeah, school, Jewish school, Jewish school, and uh, I was pretty athletic. I did a ninjutsu, not judo, ninjutsu. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I worked out a lot. I didn't have like a serious education about uh, workouts and physics. I just, you know, like chill. Uh, yeah, you like a teenager body. that wanted wanted to get to a special unit, unit, like most of Israelis. Really. But I had injuries all over the, the gap year. Mm. Uh, it came to a situation when I didn't was able to run more than five minutes. Without pain? Without really intense pain. Uh, shin splits. Shiver uh, Stress fractures. Stress fractures. And I tried uh, pretty much everything that I knew back then. Uh, not ice uh, bath, but ice massages. Nice. And uh, conventional medicine and physiotherapy and the uh, midrasim. Did anything help? Nothing helps. Wow. I wanted to address that for a moment so our audience understands. In Israel, there's not a strong gym culture. Like, you're not going to see, like, you know, jack bodybuilders, like, walking around with their protein shakes until Azuz opened up here. Mm -hmm. But there's a very strong uh, get-in-shape-and-movement culture because every 18-year-old girl or guy, it's a mandatory draft here, as you know. So, like, a lot of them push for elite units. Some of the work I do is a lot with pre-military academies, some volunteers, some paid, where I am helping them get in the best shape of their life physically, mentally, emotionally, and running is a huge part of it. And my theories, and we'll delve into this, is that majority of stress fractures and shin splints can be eliminated by taking your shoes off. Or trans the talikh, the journey of transitioning. It's not like a one-time fix. The reason I came so hooked with those running is like, imagine an 18 years old who studied in high school, that everyone is like interested in army and special units, and that's the thing. And that's my dream. That's why, that's what I'm uh, striving for, what I want to do. And I have these injuries all the time. And in the end of the year, my uh, sensei in uh, Nijitsu, Yossi Sharif, mm-hmm. told me, listen, you tried everything. Now uh, people start to talk about the foot running. Mm-hmm. Give it a try. Wow. Being you were advised by a guru and a mentor. Yeah. That's pretty rare. My, yeah, oh, that's yeah. amazing. You were sent in the right uh, yeah, direction. Yeah. And as a sensei, I'm sure he trains barefoot in his dojo. Yeah. In fact, the, the, the age, the, the Eastern uh, movement culture, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to offend some people here, but like Kung Fu and Karate and any sort of martial arts, they all train barefoot. And there's a reason for that. They tap into the secret that we're speaking about now. Definitely. So I went back to my home, uh, my parents' home, and uh, McDougal just uh, came out with his book. It's from McDougal. Born to Run. Born to Run. I didn't go. read it yet. Did it. You didn't read it yet? No. Oh, I you read didn't read it, it back yet. It Bro, after it's like the Barefoot Bible. No. Yeah, definitely. So what, I opened the YouTube on Google. I tapped Barefoot in Hebrew. Nothing came up. It didn't exist. Uh, in English, I tapped How long ago was this? 12 years ago. Wow. So that was in 20... 2008? Uh, no, no. 2010 or oh, 2011. <laughs> okay. If uh, feet are very sensitive in general, so if you need to pop your feet out just to give them a little break because the toes, then you totally could. I feel it in my core. Yeah, very much. If you start shivering too much, we may make some adjustments so it's sustainable for you. It is cold. Like, we're in an ice bath. We're in an ice bath, yeah. It's strong in this. (laughs) So, I really think I have a way to go. We'll go go off tangent for a second. Um, And I've spoken a lot about cold exposure on my ice baths. Let's put aside all the studies and physiological, how it improves immunity and fat loss and, and recovery. It's simple progressive overload. If they want to start by running one kilometer, day two, I run two kilometers, day three. You know, I add, I add speed, I add time, I add distance, I take less breaks. Cold exposure is the same philosophy. 
I've been in this bath for, I've been cold, uh, ice bathing for over a year and I've been in this tub at zero degrees for like a few months already. So it's not that I'm not, uh, no, two, three times a week. It's not that I'm not cold. It's that my level of tolerance towards this mentally is better. It's like kharif, like spicy food. I make my own spicy food and the more I eat spicy, the more I adjust it. The cold is the same. I feel my toes are falling off just like yours, but I, I'm more used to it. Like you can run a marathon barefoot. I'm not there yet. It's just a matter of what you train to do. But we, if you want, we can switch sides. Your upper body is less exposed. Would you like that? And then you can pop your feet out as well. If when we like, get there. If they're not to do a lot of movement right now. Okay. No. Well, the more you move, the, the more blood will flow. But you do your thing. Uh, and what I saw on YouTube, uh, just two years, I realized the name of the guy. Erwan Lepo. He's a French guy. Erwan Lepo. Uh, Is he the one who started MoveNet? Yeah. Ah, he's I the got, guy. Yeah, MoveNet. I have his book. Yeah. Sweet. I'm like, I know that name. Yeah. So I know the name from the second book of the Google. Amazing. Uh, Heroes, Heroes from Birth. Yeah. You can read that one. You don't have to get it. And uh, I just saw the clip of him, you know, like Tarzan, moving, doing... Swinging from the doing trees. Everything, everything in the, in nature. the, in the nature. And especially running. And uh, I saw his form and his technique. He just looked really good. And I... Uh, felt, uh, felt handicapped. handicapped and I saw this guy I uh, said to myself I want to be, like to be able to move like him did you get a parking sticker out of that? feeling like him? no, no. <laughs> so I uh, finished the clip I went to Givat Ram to the stadium in Jerusalem took my feet off my, uh, my shoes and off the track there yeah I played rugby there yeah it's a good place yeah and uh, it's been a long journey, but... 12 years ago. Yeah. Do you still go there? Are you, uh, do you still go to the Vatram campus? Uh, sometimes, and I uh, train... Do you do barefoot walks with people? Uh, so, uh, do you see a rugby team playing there? No. You know no. what rugby is? Yeah. It's like a football, but a little bit larger. The rugby team that I play with will be offended that I called it like a football. But I play rugby. I play in my Vivo barefoot soft ground shoes, like the Vivo shoes with the cleats, because they have good traction. We can speak about that in a bit. And I noticed there's two dudes. One of them looks like you. They, they are jogging slash walking tracks. And I noticed their technique is flawless. Like they're not walking barefoot just for fun. They're walking barefoot to improve their barefoot capacity. Is it possible that it's you? One on one? No, not you. Okay. So I guess it's other uh, inspired dudes. So wow, it's been a 12 year journey for you. Yeah. And it's such a pleasure to have you here. And before we even go on about the barefoot world, before we both turn into icicles, I have a bunch of questions from our barefoot community around the world as well. And here in Israel, can I ask you them? And we can engine with them. So. I have the honor and privilege to be part of the Israeli Barefoot community. I think that there's a big community centered around the Barefoot store in Tel Aviv, which is great if a store can become not just a storefront that sells physical goods, but rather a store that builds a community of something that they believe in is amazing. They're, uh, they're called Barefoot Life, located in Tel Aviv, and uh, Burger Shop 74. A little uh, shout out there for them, for what they do for Israel. And me and Matan, who is the he's one who started the group Barefoot IL, we've been in touch for the past half a year or maybe a few months, just speaking about how we can further the cause of bringing barefoot education to Israel, whether it's you know bringing balance beams like the Foot Collective has. You good? Possibly opening a store in Jerusalem. Um, bringing more. I, I'm working on several online courses for barefooters. One of them is almost going to be published. I just released one: a strength training for barefoot runners protocol, and. It's awesome, I'll send it to you as well. And just, you know, adding in more modaut, more knowledge and more awareness of this whole barefoot community thing that we have going. And uh, in the WhatsApp group I posted today, hey guys, have any questions for Ron or me? We're going to jump in the ice bath. And people are like, is it going to be recorded? I'm like, yeah, it's going to be filmed. Don't worry, we're all going to freeze our balls off on camera. And I'm part of this other community called Barefoot Crew 5K, which was started by this dude, Ben Weeks. Every Thursday... Bare, barefoot, barefoot 5k and it's an international community so hungary poland australia canada israel america everyone's running 5k on thursdays and we post about it and we share our adventures and we have leaderboards and we also share our feet so like when that woman i mentioned ran her like 200 mile race we shared that when uh, the barefoot explorer another instagram account who runs the community when he did his journey we shared his journey of like i forgot the journey exactly but I think it was the first person to do a certain like mountain head, mountain trailhead, a very very long one, barefoot. Mm -hmm. So a few of them had some questions for you as well. So if I may, so let's get that nope. cheat. Let's get the cheat cheat. Excuse the cheating here, but a paper is always good. So 
first of all, in the Jerusalem Marathon, we had a new asphalt versus old asphalt. Um, this is from one of the Israeli community members, and we've both done it. So can you give any wisdom on running on asphalt in general and if there's any differences? Yeah. So uh, actually, most of the asphalt in, in the Jerusalem Marathon is relatively okay. It's not as bad as asphalt in uh, Moshavim. Mm-hmm. Right. Is it, is it softer? What do you mean by newer? Like, like let's define that a bit. What do you mean okay? It wasn't like throw down mm. asphalt. It's, it's like scratches your feet yeah. if you don't have like crazy calluses. So, uh, first of all, like asphalt is a really, is a really good, uh, really good teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you need the the pushati or the counter, yes. the feeling. Correct. So if you do something wrong, you feel, feel it. it. You're humbled right yeah. away. You can cheat on grass very easily. Exactly. That's the worst advice is to start with sand. Mm-hmm. Wow, I like that because it's soft. Yeah. But after actually the first marathon on the on asphalt, that was my second marathon. My first was just like uh, not not official. Because this is your not... first official marathon. Yeah. Wow. After yeah. twelve twelve years, guys, that's twelve years of barefooting to get your first marathon. So put your shoes back on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what asphalt does, it uh, pushes you to be really uh, soft on your feet. Like a butterfly. You have to yeah. kiss the ground. Exactly. You have to, uh, like to not to slam your feet, just to plant it. You yeah. have to plant and kiss the ground as you run. Kiss the ground and uh, not to push the ground and you take your feet off, but to lift, to spring off. Mm-hmm. I think that running is a repetitive series of jumps. And at working with athletes, one of the first things we teach is how to land. Before you jump, you have to learn how to land. And it's always soft. You're never stiff landing. Obviously, there's 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 room for counter movement jumps where you're striking immediately and bouncing off. But before you strike off hard, you have to land softly. So it's gently kissing and bouncing off and using your body's natural ankle, knee, and hip complex to understand how to bounce off and not strike aggressively. That's exactly. how I see it. So if you go like on extreme turn off asphalt, uh, like I said in Moshevin uh, settlements, mm-hmm. uh, it's hard. Correct. It's hard to do more than 15, 20 kilometers because uh, as much as gentle as you can be, it's hard enough. It's Correct. Correct. And you'll feel it in your calves, you'll feel it in your Achilles tendon yeah. the next day. Yeah. But, um, it's a good, it's a good teacher. So, uh, the, the training on asphalt, uh, brought me to the, uh, state that I'm capable to finish the marathon barefoot. Mm-hmm. And what really actually very surprised me was that I was able to run, uh, the next week. The last time I, did, I tried a marathon, like, yes, you know, like for ultra runners, it's right. like, uh, it's like usual. You, right. But for me, it was, uh, that's like the athletic feat that I was excited about and uh, got me interested. This is what you were working for all these years. Yeah. To be able to run. Born like, to run. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, without the limitation. Yeah. Not about the, the, I can't say. The pace? Not about the pace, not about how much kilometers, just to do the movement you want to do without limitation as much right. as you will. Like, like our good friend from a movement would like, just Tarzaning it out. Yeah. So it's funny you say that because I did the 10K barefoot, which once again, it definitely wasn't my strongest uh, feat of accomplishment, but I guess a lot of people, like running 10K barefoot, especially in asphalt, is a pretty strong feat, and I was proud of it because it was the first... Rishmi official like event that I participated in as a barefooter other than hiking. I would like to do one day. I don't know if in the future Shvili Israel barefoot. I think that's a nice milestone to like hang out with and just something personal, but we're, we're not really there yet where I want to be. I think I have a lot of footwork to do, but the next day after the barefoot run, I was feeling fantastic. I ran, I hung out, I jogged. Everyone that I know, that's a lie. 90% of the people I know that ran with me with sneakers were in pain. Now, it's not that because I ran very be- good. No. No? No. So let's switch. Uh, thing, uh... Let's switch positions and okay. pop your feet out. Okay. okay, so let's do it real quick. Let's go through. 
Watch your coffee. Okay. Um, what I want you to do now is put your butt in and just gently pop your feet out of the water so it won't be as um, uh, cold for you. Tell me if this is a better adjustment, and if not, we can uh, adjust as needed. Better? Good. Okay, so let's go for another five minutes. If you feel good. And once again, Zorim, like we can also pop out of the ice bath. It won't be the first one. It is very cold. Yeah. What I was saying about the barefoot uh, running, whereas most of the people who were wearing sneakers were in terrible pain after. Now, it doesn't mean that because they wore sneakers, they were in pain and because I was barefoot. It wasn't. It's because I was able to train my body to be able to run 10K on asphalt, I I wasn't in pain. You understand the difference there? Like yeah. It's a very, very different pain. And it could be they, they were running, weren't running, but running 10K on asphalt to heel striking is a disaster. Regardless of how trained you are, how not trained you are, it could be if you have very, very strong knees, hips, and ankles that you can get away with it, but it's definitely not the way to go. It's flashing on your body. Yeah, it really is. And once again, speaking about stress fractures and shin splints, I think that they're not like the sole reason why, but I think they're a big factor why. The whole shoe and heel striking definitely. element. Uh, yeah. They're warming down a bit or warming up a bit from the podcast. Now that our souls are mellow and calm and we're all cozy, we can continue with our questions. You feeling good? Yeah. Let's do it. So before I even ask the questions, by the way, the paper fell in the tub. So now we have a wet paper, but part of life. Let's address what happened. And before off screen, I just was speaking to Ron about how runners hit, in English, it's called the runner's wall. What do we call it in Hebrew? The kir, the run, the marut, the kir of the marut. Yeah. Like you hit this place where you need a lot of mental fortitude to continue. Usually it's poor nutrition timing or not understanding your body or you're out of uh, glucose, out of uh, carbohydrate, glycogen, out of carbohydrates in your body. And the only thing that's pushing you through the run is mental fortitude. And that's kind of what happened here. Uh, we exposed Ron to cold exposure for the first time at very low temperatures. It was at around six to eight degrees Celsius. And after 25 minutes, we made the active decision. This is too cold. I can't do this anymore. And I'm not like a distance runner, so I want you to tune in on this in a second. But at kilometer 30, that runner has to make a choice and decide, am I going to drop out of the race and be okay with that decision, or am I going to continue? So can you add some clarity to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to address it because personally, one of the, maybe maybe the, the, the major like element that uh, really I felt connected uh, to with barefoot running is the mentality of let's keep the winning aside. It's not about winning. It's not about medals. It's not about how fast you run. It's not about how much you run. It's about do you enjoy the experience? Do you feel connected with yourself during the experience? Do you Love what you do. Are you one with smashing the yourself over and over and over again to be a man, to be uh, good enough, to be an achiever, to be uh, successful, and all of these things. I love them, and they're good, but in the long run, if they are your motivators, then you, I think, you won't uh, be able to be uh, to, to connect to the softness, to the gentle the beauty, no, the the, the 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 ability, the skill to be gentle, to be soft, to like barefoot running. It's a slow, as a, running, it's a slow sport. As a runner, you have to uh, match to it, to progress in it with your technique, your ability to adjust to different types of uh, terrains. You need the, the I talk about all this, the more rigish, the sensitive, the more sensitive you are, that's like the, the capacity of your sensibility, that's the capacity of uh, your abilities as a, as a barefoot one. And that's true for a lot of areas, uh, for other areas in life, as a teacher, as a, in a relationship. Uh, all of all of the works of other people, the more you able to sense what's going on, uh, you can respond. What? Uh, so yes, right now in the 
So why I started to talk about it? Because you, uh, I think, uh, the runner's role, or like we did, like I did right now in the backyard, if it's too much, stop. Stop. You don't need to finish the race. You don't need nothing. You don't need to do anything at all. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. You need to, to go uh, with what feels good to you. And uh, especially in the uh, How much are you sacrificing long term for your short term win? Yeah, exactly. I finished the race. My knee's injured for a year. Like, exactly. you have to make these executive decisions. And maybe, you know, I push myself more if I get into like uh, professional uh, running. And, uh, but uh, that's what I want to uh, promote. It's not about the. Uh, I think something. I think something that I learned from the happy runner that woman I mentioned, who is you know, uh, uh, ultra runner in England, is that I'm a strength and conditioning coach, so I'm used to metrics. I'm used to like, all right, you did 80 kilo for six reps. Next time, 85 kilo for seven reps. When the, the the moment I joined the barefoot community, a lot of us are not just barefooters. We're we're holistic, spiritual, uh, nature connected people. She's like, yeah, I'll just run like whenever I feel like. I'll be like, what do you mean? That's not like the plan. But but sometimes you have to feel it, and it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna run a 10k today, or oh, I'm feeling great. I'll run a 60k. That goes against science, but science only exists because human beings lost connection to themselves, and we no longer were able to feel what our body needed. Now, in the weight room with athletes, I find it very important to track metrics because you they must be progressing, but. If you can hack a way to uh, make sure they're progressing without tracking metrics, fantastic. I want to continue with the questions that were addressed by our community. Uh, here in Israel, in the Barefoot Israel community, they spoke about landing technique. So you're the expert on this, but in general, if you heel strike with, without shoes, it's going to hurt. So unless you're on like grass or sand, but even then, it's not the ideal way to run. So it's best to forefoot strike or midfoot strike. Because the Achilles tendon and the arch of your foot are natural shock absorbers. And the people's main question was, does your landing technique change as you adapt to different terrains? And how does it work uphill versus downhill? And you're welcome to answer that in multiple uh, parts. So now I've got to the point where uh, I don't think about my landing technique. That, that takes time to build though. A lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for six years... I was uh, focusing a lot on how I land my feet. Um, but, it's, uh, but I always told myself I want to get to the point where I don't need to uh, think about it uh, this much. And I think it's also a good guideline. So everything you hear about techniques, uh, in the bottom line, Barefoot running, in my experience, is about, again, uh, internal feedback and the way you are able to correct it. Uh, so, I will uh, say my guidelines, but there are only guidelines and uh, you should be uh, correcting yourself. And uh, landing uh, in your style. You know, there's this uh, very famous uh, Czech uh, runner. The Olympic runner, he ran with all foot, I think. And one with Perfect, or shoes? No, with shoes, yeah. with gold, uh, one gold medal. Mm -hmm. um, so, generally, I learned mostly midfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, but with a slight, like if you will see uh, my techniques from uh, the side, uh, you think I land midfoot. Mm -hmm. But I don't really feel it. I know what I learned the uh, So it's very, very small resolutions. Mm -hmm. Very subtle resolutions. Uh, and then we. Yeah. So. Uh, it's very individual to the person you're saying. Yeah, but uh, no, gen generally, heel strike is not good. Uh, the only situation they do heel strike. It rarely happens. Yeah, uh, it, it may happen coincidentally, like there's a cat and yeah. you like move out of the way, but it's not a running technique. 
you do heel strike when you walk. And I think that's sometimes misunderstood when people transition, they think that your heel doesn't exist. No, no, no. Dorsiflexion in your foot does exist. And when you walk, you plant your heel, then your big toe and push off of it. And it's important to understand that. Like the heel exists for a reason. It is a bone, just not inherently meant to be smashing. It's meant to be gently uh, touching. What were your thoughts on, also, if you can speak up a bit, so just we can hear. Uh, what are your thoughts on downhill versus uphill? You specifically mentioned you like know what to do because you're an experienced barefoot runner. But for people who are new to it, how should they be adopting their barefoot or minimal issue running technique for going up and downhill okay. as a running coach? So you need to be able to sense your uh, muscle, your center, center of gravity. Center of gravity. It starts with a correct form of the uh, posture. Posture. Because if you don't have a good posture, then uh, your center of gravity is all over the place and, you, and you, you're not able to sense where exactly it is. Um, so let's start with the natural state uh, of like a flat uh, terrain. Uh, there's supposed to be like a, a, a very small angle between uh, 1 to 9 degrees uh, in your Calcanus in your heel, like a sole. Yeah, in your ankle. ankle. Um, and you use a lot of your body weight uh, to adjust to the degree of the like downhill and up. Mm -hmm. So if I go downhill, I will take my body a little bit to the left, um, and that uh, prevents me from like uh, falling, falling. Um, the slope, and if I go uphill, I bring my body forward. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Uh, uh, and the second uh, element is also your midrach, the way you, the way you land. Mm -hmm. If I go downhill, I'm really careful to not hit uh, And it's very common to default to that because. The heel was designed to break you, exactly. which is why in sprinting, when you're trying to go at top speed, the heel is a no-no. In fact, sprinter shoes don't even have heels in them, and our shoes don't have heels either. But the heel is a break, and if we're, if we're scared of going too fast, we naturally place it on the floor to stop us. Exactly. So when I'm downhill, I do, uh, I, just, uh, I, don't, I, I focus on the way I land, and I go uh, much more to the floor. Four foot a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. Because if you're not going to heal, then you have to adapt your center of gravity. Interesting. Okay. Uh, this question is by the Barefoot Daddy. He's the head of the Barefoot Crew 5K. He just did his Barefoot Marathon, his first one. So congratulations on that in October. He's preparing for a Barefoot Ultra. So now he's asking about preparing his feet for that distance, as well as recovering after the race. Now, I'm a strength coach, so I'm pretty sure when he says feet, he's not referring to like, training his legs as in like the endurance or the strength or the calves, but actual like texture, the actual uh, a soft tissue of the foot. How do you prepare for that kind of distance? And uh, the other runner that I work with in that area, the happy runner. So after her 200 mile race, she had insane foot pain and it wasn't tissue pain. It was like from smashing your feet against pavement for 200 miles. So what would it be your wisdom for preparing your feet for longer runs? So actually that's, uh, my goal right now, I didn't yet run uh, an ultra marathon, mm -hmm. um, but the way I think, the main thing I do is to change the type of the strength I run or walk on every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a very good line, I have a very good range. And the food and the asphalt and the, uh, the rocks. Um, but I don't think there's, there's like something you can do to prepare you like the uh, okay. your feet. Yeah, I don't do something special about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll address. I don't have uh, anything uh, anything special about it. How to prepare the feet? I want to feet really good after each run. Uh, I do uh, ice bath for the feet mm -hmm. after uh, long distances. Yeah. I have my uh, 
Right, that'd be crazy. Okay, so personally regarding feet, I don't think there's something special you can do other than that whole journey of prepping your feet for barefoot. So if you can run a barefoot marathon without pain and your feet are fine with texture, then you're probably uh, towards the right steps of running an ultra marathon. If you want something specific, obviously, like getting your feet used to as many terrains and textures as possible, rock, sand, dirt, gravels, uh, hard, soft, medium, cold, hot will help a lot, both mentally and physiologically. And also the whole concept of like rolling a lacrosse ball on your feet very hard, especially uh, by the uh, first metamorsal and the fifth one, because that usually gets the most painful and tight, is very important. Not just because it's releasing the soft tissue there, but it's actually getting used to you being on texture. In fact, rolling a lacrosse ball on your foot is like walking on rocks because you're putting this intense um, pressure on the bottom of your feet. And I think a goal for any serious barefoot marathoner, any barefoot runner, is to be able to squat on two lacrosse balls. You understand what I mean? So like, one, you know what a lacrosse ball is? Like a kaduri sui. It's like one ball here, one ball here, and be able to squat and put your entire body weight on it. We can try it after. That means that your, your body's able to handle a very, very hard texture on any individual point in your body. Because why does pain happen? It happens because some part of your body is unable to adapt to the terrain around it. So this place starts hurting because this place isn't resilient. So then it just starts wreaking havoc all the way up to your knee, hip, even shoulder and elbow complex. Um, I think that's, that's it regarding questions that were asked. Obviously, you can drop questions in the comments below. Regarding tapering, so the importance of playing around with the uh, uh, loads and distances, especially for someone new to the barefoot running world. Can you uh, give some wisdom on that? Um, so, it's a long, 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 short journey. The longer, the longer road is the shorter one in the, in the long term. So, what you don't want to do, when I first, uh, we didn't uh, finish the story of how we get, but when I saw this uh, video of the one ago, and I went to the stadium with the rock run, and I ran for the first time 20 minutes in, on the grass and in the stadium and on the asphalt, I had very serious uh, malaise. In your uh, in my, inflammation, uh, in your uh, in Achilles. Achilles yeah, make it happens the first thing that goes. And I wasn't able to. I just, uh, uh, crippled for uh, three days. Yeah, Some people are crippled for weeks. Yeah. Your Achilles heals very slowly. Yeah. And then I read the book and I got the, the thing of doing it gradually. Um, let's say first time you're doing the foot run. First week, go five minutes. The, the, the baseline uh, I teach is three runs a week. Uh, one of the runs Totally go with your uh, regular shoes, normal shoes, sneakers, regular sneakers. Regular shoes. Go with your uh, comfort zone, what you're used to. Do you, do you give emphasis on forefoot striking even in regular sneakers though? Uh, or? Not in the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, the first run, go with what you're used to. Mm -hmm. You feel comfortable. The second run, uh, it's a techni technical, technical run, run, only barefoot. What kind of terrain would you recommend? In the beginning of a stadium, the like the red, like the red tar, the, the, the terrain that you won't need to think about nothing. It, it will feel, you know, there's nothing, there's no, no uh, rocks, no, no got rocks, it. no uh, nails, something like that. So I go all on stadium, all on grass, and <clears throat> do a little warm, then get your shoes off right uh, in the beginning. Walk for five minutes, no, no watch, no nothing. You want to get into a meditative state, uh, absolutely, and it's a really like it's not a spiritual thing. It's a really a concrete mood that mm -hmm. you can be in, and uh, that's what I like about the uh, whole experience. Yeah, same. You're, you're forced to, to be present. You're forced to go to a meditative state, absolutely. And the first thing we talked about that it's not here the questions. The first element that I teach, that I uh, focus on with every uh, trainer that I have, not trainer, 
trainee. Uh, trainee, yeah. Cool word that's rarely used. Is the, is the breathing. Yes. That's the first thing. No posture, no how you land, no cadence, no stride. Because if the breath is not good, then you you find it difficult to go into this meditative state. And if you're not able to go into this meditative state, uh, you want us to stop you there. Um, <clears throat> then you keep... My job as a trainer is to help the trainee to go into this meditative state and he will become his own teacher. I actually totally agree with you about running and walking being a meditative state, especially if you're barefoot because you're so much more conscious of the ground. Mm -hmm. And we're going to jump into earthing and grounding in a second, but when I hike barefoot, and I do this very often, I'm very slow. Even with minimal issues, if I hike with my earth runners or my Vibrams, I'm slow as F, and, and I'm, I'm in good shape. Like, I can do Sheila Golan right now, tomorrow. I'll pack my bags and I'll do it with you. But when you're barefoot, you're, you're, you're feeling every step, and you're conscious of everything, and you're like, oh, I feel rocks, I feel wet, I feel hot, I feel cold. And that's a flow. That's a meditative flow. And people who don't go barefoot, they won't understand that. They'll be like, as they say in the army, cats of shush, six kilometers an hour. Why are you going so slow? Because I'm actually being present with my thoughts and I'm in this state of flow. And if I were to rush, I lose that state. And I don't want to run. I want to walk. And I think it's special. Uh, there are not many physical techniques that will, it's like a hack. It will Absolutely. bring you barefoot is a hack. this fast to a meditative state. I'm not such a um, I'm not, I'm not a, a monk yeah I'm not a monk but I had after 12 years of practice yes. I realized so I because and why therefore is a hack because the sensitivity in the in the feet the only places in our body that uh, is the same sensibility uh, sensibility is the lips and our uh, genitals mm. yeah feet are very sensitive and every step every step so, it Absolutely. I, I, I think one of the, when I was asked by Barefoot Crew 5K about like what Barefoot is to me. So I said that Barefoot is building athleticism and strength from the feet up, but it's also a very spiritual state. Now, some people who are like, you know, had a trauma from religion, especially in Israel, be like, oh, spiritual, I don't want to go spiritual. But if meditation and feeling the world around you is something spiritual, then it's a very spiritual thing. If it's not, then it's also okay. I wanted to jump into earthing and grounding, specifically the ice bath that we were just in. Are you warm now? I'm okay. I'm we're getting there. We're getting there. A I'm couple of days. Covering, but then, uh, we're feeling good. So we actually have a grounding cord that connects. It's a copper cord that connects from the ground to the bath, which is known as grounding the water. Now, before we go all hocus pocus and be like, what is this uh, voodoo match we're speaking of? There are scientific back studies. I'm not talking about the movie or the documentary or the uh, studies that earth runners uh, sells to sell their sandals. Now, when you expose your body, your bare feet, not copper and not shoes and not clothes to, bare, to the bare ground, you're getting, um, help me out here, positive eons. Is that the term? Actually, I'm, I, I didn't get into the... Got uh, it. Okay. So, so, so you're getting uh, uh, energy from the earth, which is helping recharge you. Now, our bodies are primarily fueled off food and water and air, but we what the science is saying that we're like a battery that needs to be recharged. Now, does this positive or negative energy and these eons in the ground exist? Absolutely. We prove it by electric has to be grounded. When they build a, uh, a circuit breaker, they put it in your chashmal and they put it in the ground. So if electricity, if a lightning storm strikes, it will go into the ground and not fry your house. That's been proven. Does our body need it to connect to? Yes. Can it connect to the earth? It's unclear. We... What? Go ahead. I have, because both of us served in Yalo. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, we discovered uh, that we served in the same combat unit just now on yeah. camera. Uh, so it's a special uh, unit. It's an the, elite combat engineering uh, unit. Combat engineering. Watch the movie The Hurt Locker. That's what he was. Yeah. So there's, actu there, there's an action, Science, actual... Yeah. Uh, uh, but the drill you need to do before yeah. you uh, go to uh, discharge uh, above, above uh, yeah. to, dis to, to disapprify, yeah, understood. You need to 
be sure that you don't have an electrical current. Correct. So you put your phones off every right. electrical... Uh, it disconnect. And also stop like... Uh, Sappers. 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 Have this thing. I had it. Every sapper has it. Yes. When you go with the specific animations. Kabel Arata. I don't know. If uh, it's a, a, a breaker. A, a breaker cord. Yeah. yeah. You, you have your army uh, here. Yes. You take your... Uh, Eagles? Uh, it's still recovering from the... <laughs> it's all good. You take your... So you put this cable over here on your... Uh, on your... Uh, Eagle. Shop. On your shin. Yeah. And the, and it goes down and you put the other part over your uh, but over your army boot. Yeah. And there is a small cover. Yeah. And I give this example because it's a drill that starters do before they go to discharge to this right. uh, armor bomb. Yes. It's not like a spiritual. It's not hocus pocus. It's real. It exists. It, no one's, your no one's... body is an electrical body. Correct. And I did that into the scientific right. grounding. But even if I have this one example, I think there's a lot into yes. this uh, discharge. Uh, yes. yes. So, so my like point, and then we'll finish off with this, is that no one's disagreeing that uh, this electricity current exists. In fact, your the what we did in our unit proves that, and also Shachar from the Barefoot Store and Tel Aviv, they did studies on it of people who work with electricity, and they proved it as well. But how much exposure can I actually get, and how much health benefits can I get from planting my barefoot into the ground is to be determined. But and this is not a mechka or a study or a science or peer reviewed research. It's a fact. If you're gonna go out every day and wiggle your toes in the grass, you're probably living a good life. There's something about I'm in sunshine, I'm in nature, I'm, I'm exposed, I'm feeling the ground beneath me, and it's a great practice to have, even if it doesn't do anything. So that's pretty much it when it comes to grounding. Um, did you want to touch upon the uh, mind-body connection that we spoke about in the beginning of the episode? Yes, yeah, so like, I kind of like uh, talked about it uh, all over the top, but I know that uh, I think you, you said the uh, holistic... Uh, this uh, metric yeah. way to I see again, my job is to train the, the, the skill uh, to develop the sensitivity and uh, I go without without watch Amazing. Every yeah. I stop tracking those metrics no matters, well. no uh, metrics and it's very like what to do how to learn, how to like, like, give me every step uh, and I think the, the great experience of barefoot running is you take your shoes off, you go out running, you do uh, have like a lot of uh, stuff to read right now on YouTube and right. people and, uh, and trainers, but I think the uh, really nice part of it is just so, the, the adventure to feel it. I think what I'm hearing for you is this beautiful thing is that you're saying, I'm not teaching how to run, people how to run. I'm te- that's what YouTube does. I'm teaching them how to flow. I teach them how to connect with connect. their body, to feel their Your, body, and their body will teach them exactly. how to run. You're teaching them how to like, yes, yeah, so I'm trying to imply is that it's not this is the way to run. It's that this is running and I want you to connect to it. I think that's a very, very important educational method because instead of teaching them like by the book, you're teaching them how to connect to their own purpose. Because physical intelligence, I think, I believe is the high is the highest degree of knowledge. In Hebrew, we have, the first time we say the word Yada, is Yada Adam Echavayish. Mm-hmm. And uh, Yada means to know something so deeply you can't express it in words. Once you felt it in your body, you have a dog. Once you, you don't talk to the dog, don't do this, don't do that. Mm-hmm. He has to have the physical experience. Right. This is bad, this is good. Correct. We also need to have this. And um, yeah. Can you, uh, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. We got wow. to sit in the cold, we got to sit in the warm, we got to find out we served in the same unit uh, only two years apart, and I'm sure we'll see each other in reserves. Can you tell us where we can find you, where we can find your uh, in-person teachings, your online courses, whatever you offer? Yeah, so I have my uh, 
מהפייסבוק אקאונט. יאס, רון כהן. רון כהן, רון כהן. יא, רון כהן. מה זה גם איזה רון כהן, העיקר הורה ל-CO או ל-54. And uh, very soon there'll be more stuff. Hell yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward. Thank, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm going to present you with a shirt in a moment. And I just wanted to thank the audience for watching this episode. And of course, if you have any questions about Barefoot Running or Barefoot Education, feel free to shoot it our way. I want to present Ron with this nice shirt. It says, your workout is my warm-up because he did run a Barefoot Marathon. So uh, now we're matching. Enjoy it and wear it in good health. And that's all for now. And you know what I'm going to do to you now. I don't know. The guy is doing it. Let's go. We have a tradition in the army, in the wow. unit that we just discovered that we uh, are in, is one minute and 20 burpees. So it looks like he doesn't have PTSD from them. Like Over the years of being a strength and conditioning coach, many runners have come to me with the same issue. They're either living in pain, plateauing in their running, or struggling with strength training. This is where our Strength Training for Runners program kicks in. We have two strength days, one speed day, one active recovery day, one foot and ankle day, one play day, and one education day. This beautiful blend will make you the best runner you will ever be. You can find details in the link below.